uh, just a few announcements again before we begin. Uh, if I could ask the brothers to just try to move to this side of the lecture hall, of the prayer hall, uh, so we can give the sisters their space to come forward as much as possible. So to the right of this, or to your left of where I'm pointing right now, if you can make your way over to this side, that would be great. And also, uh, everybody can move up as much as possible. That will be great, so we can you know, really get engaged in, uh, uh, to the lecture. Um, finally, uh, you see this number up here? For whoever wants to ask anonymous questions, if you want to ask a question you don't want to be identified, uh, you can go ahead and text. It's completely anonymous. Text to this phone number. I'll read it out loud. 714-576-8941. Uh, Once again, 714-576-8941. So go ahead and utilize that number. Text throughout or right now if you have a question on your mind. And inshallah, we'll do our best to ask that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with the program. The title of the program is, um, Are You in the Driver's Seat? Uh, I won't read uh, Sheikh Aladdin's bio because he asked me not to. <laughs> so without further ado, let's <laughs> begin. Barakallahu feek. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In order to learn anything about faith, especially, we have to set things straight. Number one, Allah made it in such a way that knowledge knowledge comes from people. You learn knowledge from people. But hidayah, guidance, can only come from Allah. And since we are right now the guests of Allah, Jalla Jalaluhu, and we are in His house, and He is our host, and he's Arhamul Rahimin, Akramul Akramin. We need to, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your heart, He needs to see few things. Number one, that you are really serious. <laughs> and when it comes to your deen, you are very serious. Like if someone comes and bothers you with your income, you become very serious and very stressed. So when it comes to your deen, your deen is something that should be of the utmost seriousness comparing to anything else. That is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is number one in your heart. That's an indication that you have Tawheed. That La ilaha illallah is tre truly exist in your heart. Because you, you say, like Sayyidina Ayyub salam said, our role model, Allah took from him business, money. He checked with himself, La ilaha illallah. I can lose money. I didn't lose my faith. So Allah, you know, took it a notch up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from him what? His children, one after another, one after another, one after another. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajun. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And it is easier said than done. If you lose one deal in your business, your mind goes crazy. Imagine someone lost all of his shops, all of his income. And then... He start having ish. The sons dying one after another. One son or one daughter dies and you are already going crazy. Imagine all of them, one after another. Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam checked with himself. La ilaha illallah. How is my iman? Iman is in Allah. Allah gave me money. Allah took the money away. Allah gave me children. I didn't bring them to life. He took my children away. How is my Iman? My Iman is good. It's okay. So Allah took another thing from him. His health. He became very, 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 very sick. From very tall, wide, healthy looking man to a very, very, very tired, laying in bed. Million sicknesses. When he became sick, he made dua. He said, Ya Allah, take anything but just keep two things for me my tongue and my consciousness 
so that I can remember you in my heart and remember you with my tongue. Anything else? No problem. <laughs> so long as I can say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, so, so, for us Muhammad Rasulullah, I am fine. When all of this happened, people started saying, what did Ayyub do for him to deserve all of this? What did he do? So his honor in the eyes of people start going down. They said, yani they start accusing him of being a cursed man. He must have done something very bad. So his honor in the eyes of people also was gone. Then they said, he's a curse to our city and his sicknesses will get us sick. So get him out of the city. So he was pushed out to exile, literally kicked out of the city. What is left? What is left? All the ni'mah and all the pleasures of dunya. His story in the Quran is not there for nothing. It's there for you and I to make a conscious decision inside us. What is the most important thing in my life that I cannot lose or afford to lose? And that's your deen. Because if you have your deen, you can face whatever happens in life. If you have no deen, you know this bottle of water will make you cripple and fall onto your nose and you will cry. And you will consider your life is done and miserable. Just cripple on this water bottle. If you have deen and iman, whatever happens in life, you can face it. So that's the one thing you cannot afford to lose because if you lose it, you will lose your sanity and you will lose your consciousness and you will lose everything and then it doesn't matter if you are the wealthiest healthiest most honorable man in the eyes of people you'll be done you're fried basically yani brothers and sisters allah in al quran al kareem gives us real examples from real life can anybody be more famous than these movie stars and singers that are not far away from you Can anybody be more famous in the recent history more than Michael Jackson? Whitney Houston? The guy who acted in the Batman when they found him overdosed. These people reached any dream could be possibly reached in dunya. Money, fame, well, health, they got the looks. Everything you would wish for, they have it. But when they didn't have their deen and their iman to help them understand, even the ni'mah to them was overwhelming and it was bala. Like, they, they freaked out. There was so much ni'mah, they didn't know what to do. It freaked them out. Can you imagine someone, you give him ni'mah, you make him famous, you make him healthy, you make him good looking, you make everybody desire him, he freaks out and dies. <laughs> what do you want? And that's why it doesn't matter what life throws at you, ni'ma or niqma or bala or shaq. It doesn't matter. What matters is what's going on in your head. Because Allah could give you a ni'ma and that ni'ma, you, will, you will be gone. It will destroy you. So Allah gives us these examples. And by the way, when I talk about these people, I don't, I don't mean to be judgmental. I don't mean to put them down. I don't mean to, you know, say, oh, look at them. No, 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 no. I, but I have to learn the lesson. People said Michael Jackson died as a Muslim. Inshallah. <laughs> Does that make me feel bad? Inshallah, he died as a Muslim. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him you know, maghfira in akhira if he died with la ilaha illallah Muhammad. So, what, what does that bother me? That's not the lesson. Whether he's a Muslim or not a Muslim, that's not the issue. The issue is, where does your deen and iman? So that's why, when Allah looks at your heart and he sees you that you're serious and you are sincere and you know that hidayah comes from Allah. But knowledge you can learn from people. But it doesn't matter which sheikh you're learning from. It doesn't matter which book you're reading. It doesn't matter which halaqa you are in. If you don't ask guidance from Allah, you will not be guided. Let's not fool around. <laughs>
And that's very important because we want to learn something about ourselves, about life, and about our faith. This is why we are here today. And for us to figure anything out, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will guide us. So, in order for us to be able to navigate or to know what are we talking about, You know, you have now every phone has GPS in it. The satellite tells you where you are. In order for the satellite to tell you where you are, the satellite has to know where it is itself. Do you know how the satellite know where it is? The satellite has to locate its own self and then it will locate you and then it will tell you where you're going. If the satellite doesn't know where it stands, it can never tell you where you're going. So the satellite shoots one beam at the sun one beam at the moon, one beam at earth, and two beams at another two stars, the satellite knows where it is. Now it can guide you. So one day I was making khutbah al Jum'ah in the Bay Area, and I was saying, Allah said, وَعَلَامَاتْ وَبِالنَّجْمِ هُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ Allah said, people get guided by the stars, because before all of this GPS, people sailed in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the ocean, because of stars. They, got, they, 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 they travel in the middle of the desert like no one is there with stars. I said, now you have GPS. So a brother stopped me after Salat al-Jum'ah and he said, Sheikh, I work at a GPS company and I want to correct you and I know you would love this. Do you know for the GPS to tell you where you are, the satellite has to tell it. Do you know for the satellite to know where it is it still has to use the sun and another two stars and the moon and the earth. So the ayah still apply today. <laughs> because for the satellite to tell you where you are, the satellite has to know where it is. So for you to know where you're going in life, you have to know where you stand. You have to answer the question, who am I? What is life? Who are people? And what is faith? If you answer every question from these, and we want to answer them from the Quran, not from our own mind, and from the example of Rasulullah then we know where we're going. If we don't, then I can talk to you till tomorrow Fajr, and it will be very nice lecture, and when you walk out of that door, you will not know how to apply it. So what are we going to do? You came to the masjid. You laughed, you cried, you said, I am a very good speaker. And when you went home, you couldn't walk away with anything that you could apply in your life. We don't want that. We want to learn, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. That's why what we want to do is based on participation. So I'm going to ask you, inshallah, and you help me to answer, inshallah, men and women. And we will draw things here and we will realize Okay, what's the big picture here? Now, I have a challenge. What I'm about to teach you, it takes me eight hours to teach. I'm going to squeeze, try to squeeze eight hours. And, and it shouldn't, like that's eight hours, that's just the like introductory. I'm going to try to squeeze it in one hour. But inshallah, with your participation, we should go and get the headlines and then be, at least get an idea what's going on. Because this education, I feel, Every Muslim should have and every Muslim should teach his family and his children. This is education about life. This is education. Chemistry is information. This is transformation. And there's a huge difference between the two. This is when you are educated. Have you know have you ever met someone people say, you know, mashallah, he's this PhD, this and that. The brother want to read my bio. I said, why you want to read my bio? If I'm a boring speaker and people will not learn, Wallah, if you give me the best bio, it won't make a difference. And if I have no bio at all, and I could prove for you my case, and it makes sense to you, and I can show it to you from the ayat of the Quran, then what is my bio going to do? Nothing. Then you will not be asking about my bio. Subhanallah. That's why one has to see the big picture and then understand where you're navigating in life. The first thing that we ask ourselves, I am here and I am facing life and I 
don't want to be a victim. Anyone here would like to be a victim? Raise your hand. Alhamdulillah. It's going to be an easy job, inshallah. Right. But you know what? You know what's funny? Many of us victimize ourselves and then enjoy being a victim. You know why? Because if you say I'm a victim, you have to do nothing. I'm a prisoner. If I was a free man, I would have done a lot in life. But I'm a prisoner. So sometimes we victimize ourselves and then we enjoy being victims. And then when someone asks you, would you like to be a victim? No. Na'udhu billah. I don't want to be a victim. But you're acting like one. And that's why the title of our lecture today is what? Is being in the driver's seat. Are you in the driver's seat or are you, or are you grinding under the wheels? Where do you stand? But in order to talk about driving, we, we want to go, where are we going altogether? In order we talk about driving and we need to know who's the driver and what does the driver want? What is the vehicle and what is the vehicle made of? Right? And what is the direction and where is the destination? If we don't know this, then we cannot be talking about whatever we want to talk about today. You know, then you don't need this lecture altogether. So the question is, many of us, when we think about ourselves, you know, you know, you, you, you start thinking about yourself, and I need someone to volunteer to write, so that I, I want to be speaking, and I want someone to be writing. Who's good at writing? Please, Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a whole array here of colors, and use all of them. I like colors. Okay. Very good. So, I am here, you are here. You're sitting down, I'm standing up. We're both human beings. My question to you, what are you made of? What do you consist of? Yes. <laughs> so, what I want you to do, so in order not to lose sight, what I want you to do is, if you can do, here, in the middle of the board, uh, draw a circle, make circles like that, and make for me five of them. Jazakallah khair. Very good. Uh, smaller. <laughs> okay. So, what are you made of? What's your material? Because we're trying to fix you, right? And me. So, if someone brings for you a car, your shop fixes Honda. He brings for you Mercedes. Can you fix it? You should. You fix Hondas. This shop is for Hondas. Maybe you will have an idea, a little bit, but you will find very soon that Mercedes makes their cars completely different than Hondas, right? So the thing is, if we want to fix you, then we need to know who are you. Otherwise, we're just talking. We're just talking. What does Allah tell us about ourselves in the Quran? What are we made of? Yes, sister. Okay. So the brother started with the water. So can you put here water plus what? What did Allah say he created us from? Huh? Mud. Mud is a mixture of what? Water and Dirt, water and dirt. Very good. So that's, that's what? So the brother talked about the 70-30 percentage. Subhanallah, Allah said, I created you from earth. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى Percentage of water versus land on the surface of the earth. 70-30, 75-25, same percentage in your body. 70-75 water, 20-25 what? 25-30, sol solid material. You reflect earth, subhanAllah. Allah created you from planet earth. You reflect the percentages of planet earth. This is our planet. This is where we exist. Alhamdulillah. So, this is part of you. Right. Now, I want just to share this with you because I could spend a whole hour on this. But we live at a time and we live at a place that the world cares about and sees nothing but this, your body. All what they want is your body. And since we did not create our own bodies, we have no control how we look. 
So what do you do when you come to a human and tell him, by the way, you don't look good? Type, what do I do? There is nothing you can do about it. Ajeeb Allah. So I'm doomed for life? Yes. Go and bury yourself. This is, this is how high school girls talk to each other. This is, this is reality. So imagine when something you didn't create nor you accomplished and then the whole society and everything revolves around it. It's all about the way you look. If you look good, you should feel secure, confident, happy, excited, on top of the world. Even if you know zero, nothing about nothing, you just look good. Khalas, that's your ticket to heaven on earth. If you don't look good, you know, go, go, and, go and learn. Maybe you need education. Because if you look good, you don't need education. Your look will get you anywhere. This is how we live. This, the entire economy is established on one theory. You are nothing but a body. That's what the economy is established about. Now, when you pick up dirt, when you pick up dirt, how does dirt smell? Can I safely say dirty? Because it's dirt, right? So it should smell dirty because it's dirt. Subhanallah. So the whole products when you go to Walmart, Target, any of these big stores, the entire thing is established around your body. Because your body, just being your body, if you sweat, you smell like dirt. If you cry, you smell like dirt. If the wax smells bad, the boogers looks bad and smells bad like everything right bathroom number one doesn't look good bathroom number two ugly and it's like that's that's who we are that's the reality of the body and there is no way around it we just take ghusl and make wudu and say alhamdulillah but that's who your body that's your body is made like that and when someone comes to you and says you are only a body and you should only take care of this and pay attention to this and then your entire life becomes around this and there is something about your body that you can never do anything about it when your age goes north your body goes south the more you get older the more your body retreats if your only achievement and security in life is your body the older you become the more sad and depressed you become because you're losing your look and that's all what you got in life Instead of the older you become, the wiser, more mature, happier, the older you become, the sadder you become. When you ask the teenagers and 21 years old and their 20s, what are you going to do when you're 40? I'm going to shoot myself. Qasaman Billah al that's answer number one. Go and read the statistics. What are you going to do when you are 40 and above? I'm going to shoot myself. Do you know what they do? They never shoot themselves. But they live the last 20, 30, 40 years of their life from 40 to 80, they live it in sadness. Khalas, they closed. When actually your best years as a Muslim is when you hit 40 and up. That's when you mature, become, learn what life is. You went through it all. You have experience. You are get, good to go. You're ready. You're experienced, knowledgeable, solid. And now you can start living your life. That's when you're supposed to die. <laughs> in another civilization. What, what else do we have? What did Allah give us? Huh? Ruh. Where would you put the ruh in, com in contrast with the body? Which circle should be the ruh? The top one. Can you please write ruh here? Soul, spirit, ruh, whatever you like to call it. Okay, what else? Knowledge, aql, mind. Huh? Right there. Very good. Wonderful. Excellent. What else? Faith. Huh? Faith. Faith. I'm talking about you, not what you believe. What are your components? Huh? Is a young girl there? Heart. Absolutely. You're like shy to say heart or something? Very good. Don't say heart. It's the sheikh. Okay. Soul, mind, heart, body. What are we missing? Yes. Strength. Jinn? Oh, vision. Okay, vision. Okay. Alhamdulillah. That's not part of us. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَارِ وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَارٍ Completely two different creation. Vision. Vision belongs to the body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your body 
eyes, ears. But, by the way, you don't see by your body. Do you know what sees in you? Yes. The brain. What sees in you? I'm asking you, anyone here ever, like, once in your lifetime saw a dream? Is that very, like, bad or something? Like, uh, did you ever see a dream? Okay. When you see a dream, you only dream when your brain shuts off everything. When you're dreaming at night, sleeping, very nice dream. Are your eyes open? Are your ears open, like listening? Is your mind working? But yet you see and you hear and you live. How could you have your vision when your eyes are closed? It's not your body that sees, it's your soul that sees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a body to fit a soul, not a soul to fit a body. The reason why there is eyes in your head is because your soul sees. If you were a worm, you wouldn't have eyes in your head because your soul doesn't see nor it needs to see. It just needs to live under the ground. You wouldn't need eyes. If you were a worm, you wouldn't need eyes. But because your soul sees, Allah put two openings here and called them eyes. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ Why? Hmm? In your dreams, is it always like the silent movies and only music? Or like you talk in your dreams? But your lips are not moving. So the one that talks is your soul. This is only a tool that your soul uses to talk that your soul uses to hear, that your soul uses to see, that your soul uses to touch, that your soul uses to smell. But if all of them don't exist, your soul can still see, hear, touch and smell. So actually Allah created a body to fit the abilities of the soul. And you know what happens? Your soul before you were born could see, hear, understand and talk what did allah say in the quran وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ when we took from the children of adam from their back their children this your soul came out of you the back of your mom and dad and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to you وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ and allah made them witness upon themselves أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ am i not your lord قَالُوا بَلَىٰ they said yes you are our lord your soul not only was able to hear, see, it was able to completely be conscious and have a conversation with Allah and say to Allah, yes, you are my Lord. And that all happened before you were born. And you know when you die, the body will go back to dirt and your soul will continue the journey. And it will still see and hear and touch and smell and everything and think and consciousness. But we live at a time they make us feel stuck in our body it starts with the body it dies with the body and then you are like I'm very sad because my body is like not happy no your body could exist not exist be awake be sleep in a coma in an accident it doesn't matter it's your soul that is living it is the soul that it would joins the body, the body becomes alive. It is the soil when it leaves the body, the body dies, but the soul never dies. Have you ever considered yourself a spiritual being before being a physical being? Have you ever been in touch with your soul? Have you ever appreciated, valued your own soul? Some people, when they look in the mirror and they see the white hair, they get sad. I'm getting old. The Prophet ﷺ said, this is Nurul Mu'min. This is your light. Don't feel sad. Your soul is shining and now it's showing. showing. So don't worry. Different understanding of life. What are we missing here? Huh? That's, I'm talking about you. Shahawat. Huh? Give me another word, huh? 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 The, I, I want to hear? Ego. Huh? 
So the sister here said nafs, the brother before said nafs. And that's absolutely right. And in the second raka'ah of Salat al-Isha, the longest qasam in the Qur'an, the longest oath Allah took in the Qur'an was the oath that ended up with what? With the nafs. You want to count with me? وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Eight qasam back to back in the Quran just to talk about your nafs. And you know how big is your nafs? Allah put it next to the sun, to the moon, to the earth, and then comes your nafs. That's how big is your nafs. Your ego. Your pride. That's why if you never go through the tarbiyah and the tazkiyah like the sahaba went with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you can talk Islam all day long and you can learn and become maulana and mullah and alim and you can learn and become a mufti and take the alim program and the ifta program and it will mean absolutely nothing because you did not go through the tarbiyah and tazkiyah. That's why Allah said, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّنَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ what does Rasulullah do? Four things. Yatlu alayhim ayati. Allah sent the messenger to recite the ayat. Wa yuzakkihim to purify them. Wa yuallimuhumul kitab. And then he teaches them the kitab. Then you learn the details of knowledge. Because what happens when someone learns the details of knowledge, but he did not have tarbiyah and tazkiyah and purification of the soul? With his ilm, he will mislead himself and others. And then you have to learn wisdom, four steps. So we don't want to get lost there because that's a whole lecture by itself. Each one of them, each one of them is, so we have a sister's halaqa in our masjid every Saturday. Because like if, if you teach the mother, you taught the whole family. The mother will teach the husband, the mother will teach the son, the mother will teach the daughter. So I focus where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa focused, right? You teach the first one, Khadija, right away. Huh? His daughters, Fatima, Zainab, um, Ruqayya, Umm Kalthum. First, we take care of this, and then you can create generation. It will become a wheel after that. That's why, where does everyone around us focus? Do they focus on men or women? All the attack is on women. And I'm not talking about the Muslim women. Any woman. Any woman. The attack is always on the women. Because... You, you destroy the woman, you destroy the society. You destroy men, women will give birth to another generation and the society will continue to be great. You destroy women, you kill the society. That's why, you know, women is used in everything, in every advertisement, like a tool, and a tool of pleasure, a tool of attraction. And that's what you are good for. You're just good for a tool of attraction. And when you say, no, 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 I am not going to even allow you to use me as a tool of attraction. Here is my headscarf. Here is my abaya. You get out. You want to talk to me? You talk to my mind. Look, look, look here. Don't look anywhere. No, up, up. Don't look anywhere. Up. Don't look anywhere else. Here, look here. And talk. What do you want? Ah, you want to fool around, huh? Get out. Get away. Get out. Go find someone else. Go find I'm not an object of pleasure. I'm not a tool of attraction to be used by everyone. Ajib wallah. Pepsi, woman. Car oil, car oil, woman. Tires, woman. Toothbrush, woman. Like, what's the relationship? Just use them as an object of this and tell them. That's what you're good. That's what they're telling you. And then, and then, we, the Muslims, look bad. We are holding your freedom. And they are offering you freedom. And you should run away from us and go to them because they have so much honor for you. And we have, we're just, we just want to limit your freedom. Really? Is that what we want to do? Is that what Allah, because we don't, we're nobody. Is that what Allah wants from you? Is that, is that how you feel honored? Yani, you cannot go to sleep unless you take the best possible photo that you can take, the most attractive photo that you can take of yourself, then go and post it on Facebook, and then make thousands of people see it, 
while Allah gave you a sitter, sitter like Allah gave Maryam ibn Ta'imran a sitter. She said, please, Uncle Zakaria, please build for me a room. Yani, I don't want to mix with this. And, and, and curtain and uh, Allah built for you a room, your own room. Your parents give you an own room. You take a photo of yourself in the position. You take a thousand of them until you get the right angle exactly. Because from any other angle, you look ugly anyway. So you have to get the right angle. That's the only angle. Like You can tell. It's all inferiority complex. It's all non-confidence. It's all complexity. This and that. And now once you take it, you post it. And now you feel confident. When, when people look and say, wow, great picture. Really? Is that what you have boiled yourself down to? Is that what you think of yourself? That best photo? Is that what you are? Allah gives you sitter and you go and expose yourself to the world, to al alamin Why? Why? Because you are nothing but a body and you are nothing but this beauty and you are nothing but an object of and a tool of pleasure and attraction. This is what you have decided to make yourself of and you call that honor? I'm sorry, but that's not honor. I'm sorry. I don't prescribe to that honor. Yani, subhanallah, if a woman fixes herself to attract men in the street, every time a man passes by, because her intention was to do that, every time a man passes by and gets attracted, she will get a sayyah. But at least the old style, men had to see her in the street. Right now, she's sleeping at home in her sitter, and thousands of men see her on the internet. And every time a man sees her, she's collecting. The count is going like this. Of sayyat. While she's sleeping at her home. Why? Because our sister cannot feel good until a million people tell her you look good. Then she feels good. Ajib. You make yourself a victim out of yourself. You give yourself a value equal to how I look. And then you complain that you're not in the driver's seat. What's this? What, what is the world coming to? I'll never have a Facebook account and I'll never open an account and I don't want to see. And if someone wants to send me their picture, let me send me their picture. My family, you can send me my picture in email. I'll accept that. I'll see it or send it to me like old, whatever you want. But don't post it for thousands of peoples for God's sake. What, do you have so many hasanat you can donate some to the others? Is that what it is? But that is you. The problem is, for you to be bothered, million things could bother you. If you get sick, your body is bothered. Now you have a problem. There is temporary sickness, long-term sickness. If your nafs is sick, you are bothered. If your heart is sick, you are bothered. If your mind is sick, you're bothered. And if your soul is sick, you're bothered. Do you know where you're getting bothered from? Do you know yourself? When you talk to yourself, do you know, is this my nafs? This is my body. This is my mind. This is my heart. This is my soul. Do you know how to identify? You have to be able to do that. This is a training. If you don't know how to do that, it will be like someone is stabbing you in the heart and you're like, where are you stabbing me? Because you don't know. You will be dead very soon if someone is stabbing you in the heart and you don't know where they're stabbing you. You will be very soon dead. You will bleed to death. And that's what's happening. The balloon just goes down very quickly. Why? Because we never had a time to go to Al-Quran Al-Kareem, to our smartphone, instead of keeping posting ourselves like people who are sick for attention forever, we can go and download an app from Al-Quran Al-Kareem and I can put right now in front of you, you can put it in Arabic. You can put the word soul in English in any of these Quran app. You can put the word ruh, R-O-O-H, transliteration, and it will pull for you all the ayat in the Quran that speaks about the ruh. Have you ever invested some time? Put the word ruh, research, learn about yourself. Put the word aql, research from the Quran, put, learn about yourself. Put the word qalb, research about yourself. You know what I found out? I found out when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the qalb in the Quran is different than the qalb that people talk about. 
Allah never wasted ayat in the Quran talking about the emotional heart. The heart in the Quran is used as the deep mind, the deep consciousness. Allah makes your qalb is what sees, what hears, what understands. You're wasting your time. Oh, my heart is hurting my emotion. Most of the civilization around us will make us emotional like nothing. Anything is emotional. Anything is emotional. And there is not even a room for that. <laughs> and that's why, brothers and sisters, first we need to learn this. Invest some time. That's why in this ladies' class on Saturday, we take this, we spend two hours. Sometimes two, three Saturdays, we get all the ayat in the Quran about the ruh. We get the tafsir. We look, what does Allah want to teach us about the ruh? What does Allah want to teach us about the mind? What does Allah want us to teach us from the Quran about the heart? What is the nafs? What is the body? And then we pull all the hadith. So now I know who am I? I'm not just walking out around like an <laughs> ignorant person. Then, once you learn this, then you come to learn, okay, what bothers you in life? If I were to make here like circles, if we were to put a line here around it and a line and draw here, tell me a source, something that bothers you. I'll give you an example. My job, for example, you work at an IT company. I say one source of stress in my life is my job. So we put here, what is it? Job. Give me another source. Huh? Chill. Okay. Put here, family. My family is a source of stress. Very good. Give me washing the dishes, <laughs> or you're speaking on behalf of your wife, huh? <laughs> Bismillah. Yes, young boy. Shaitan bothers you? Allah <laughs> alaihim. Allah ilano. Shaitan. Oktabir. Shaitan. Very good. Shaitan. Yalla, tell, add, what bothers you? Finances. Source, my finances is a source of stress for me. Hmm? Give me. So what did you say? Health? Health. Can you please make a circle? My health is bothering me. Someone could be sick and they're, huh? Young girl. Nightmares. Time. Uh, nightmares. We can put my nightmares. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep all nightmares away from us. Okay, the situation of the... So can I say, can I write here, people? People bother you, right? Always people bother us. If people can leave us alone, we'll be very happy. Okay, people. خلاص. We'll find another planet. Huh? 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 Bad deeds or ma'asiyah bothers you. Okay. Shaitan. Can we put here disobedience? Okay. Very good. What? Give me things in life that bothers you. People. Family. Job. What? Finances. Huh? Give me another chunk. I want a chunk. Huh? Huh? Addictions, okay. You wanted to say something, sister, there? Yes, there? Okay, so school, absolutely, school. Schools and grades. That's a source of stress, legitimately. Everything is up for grabs. What bothers you? What is it that is bothering you? Some people, their income, their finances. Some people, their family. Some people, work. Some pe what is it? Yes. Fitting, okay, the environment. Wonderful. Environment. Said brother, huh? Yes, 
Barakallahu feek. He says all of this is from the outside, but there are sources that are from the inside. Wonderful, wonderful. What bothers you in life? So, I would, the brother would like to say, internal, conflict. internal conflict. Good. And that we can fit so much. And by the way, we have a whole thing that we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to throw stuff on me, but I want you to chunk it out. Let's chunk it out. Okay, subconscious mind, yes? The world situation, people situation. Okay, yes. Future, oh, future. Okay, um, even though we're getting, we're tapping into another thing, but I'll take yes. Spouse, okay. Family, family. Spouse, children, mom and dad, uncles, aunts, expectations, yes. Needs, okay. So these are our needs. Can we safely say we've covered the big chunks? Yes. You want to say something? Okay. Chores. Can you see? Can we write job? Can we write chores? Daily chores. You know, sometimes you feel your life is wasted in small things. And, and I feel that. Like, subhanallah, you know, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Yes. Especially for sisters, like every day, washing the clothes, washing the dishes, cleaning the house. This, if you do it every day, every day, if you don't have a higher goal in life, that will kill you. It will kill you. Because you find your entire life is just gone in washing dishes and washing clothes and cleaning the house and cleaning the bathrooms and cleaning the kitchen and cooking the food and this and that. If it doesn't have a bigger meaning, it will kill you. Yes. Survival. Okay, so is that income? Okay. Survival. Okay, very good. I'm sorry? How we look at. Exactly, yes. What am I talking about? The look. Yes. Um, looks. Finances is debt. Death. Okay, very good. Let's not get there. These are the big chunks. <sighs> you know, there's two ways to live life, basically. One way, you see every one of these is a wheel. And you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We can easily go 18. Do you know the 18 wheeler? The big, the big 18 wheeler? Right. So, you know, most of the people, how do they live? Do you know how they live? They live being grinded under these wheels their entire life. There's two ways to live life. Either being grinded under these wheels. So, if we can, you think we can bring this on the top, like that, like that, like that. Like I'm going to put this in the bottom and this is on the top. See, you know how people live their life? Most of us, here, under all of these wheels. And then we complain that we are burnt out. There's two ways to live life, either under these wheels or... Give me the thing, the, the marker. You see this? There is a cabin here. And then there is a seat here. And then there is a steering wheel. In life, there is no other position. Either you're grinding here or you are in the driver's seat. In order for you to know to be in the driver's seat, you have to know yourself, you have to know life, and you have to know faith in which direction you're going. If you don't have this education, your life will be nothing but small problems grinding you and grinding you and grinding you and grinding you. And you become hopeless and you become helpless and you become what? 
and all the negative feelings will happen to you why because you never got a time to know yourself to know each of these wheels and to know the solution that makes you in the driver's seat driving in a direction which is your Dean each and every one you mentioned is a four-hour lecture in the from the Quran just pure ayat pure ayat pure ahadith no qala fulan and qala fulan nothing each and every one of them is full in the Quran and very interesting Allah in the Quran tells you this is the problem and by the way this is the solution but you know what we read the Quran for we only read it in Ramadan so that we can get tin hasana for letter and that's it we're not interested into understanding it we're not interested into internalizing it we're not interested into applying it we just want the hasanat from Allah and then Allah I want to live my life the way I want to I know how to live my life I don't want to don't tell me I don't want to live a Muslim life that's rigid that's extremism um, that's being too tough no, no. I know how to live okay tfaddal, live life five years later we meet you completely burnt out and you know not only you everybody else Muslim or not if you don't have the right education where you're going subhanallah and the solution sometimes is very small very small hidden under like <laughs> this phone you can hide the solution on it خلاص, no problem now having said this this causes us to have feelings this makes us feel in a certain way so let's put the thing down again and let's see you know one of the very interesting things about psychologists in America that's why I never wanted to be a psychologist is you go to them and you say I lost my job. I, I need some help. And how does that make you feel? What? How does that make you feel? Terrible. Why are you asking? That's why I'm here anyway. And then I have, you know, family problems. And how does that make you feel? And you spend the whole interview, and how does that make you feel? And how does that make you feel? And how does my... You feel like getting up and hitting the guy and walking out, you know? And then telling him, and how does that make you feel? <laughs> but that's how they, they do it. In any case, yes, you want to take a picture? Take a picture. Yes, fine. But the thing is, it's still not... I, I'm not going to wipe anything out. I just want you... Uh, Jazakallah khair. He wrote deep mind here self and things I just want to make because this is all around you here this is all around you very easy very simple so right now I want you to describe for me this makes you feel what <coughs> spill it out <laughs> can you please write overwhelmed very good that's what I'm looking for depressed like you're gonna write here, 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 here. So it's, there will be, you will be surprised how much we're gonna end up with. Okay, very good. Depressed. Please, more. Okay. Challenge is a nice word. I want the ugly words, right? Yes. Huh? Aggravated. Okay. Angry. So take it easy on the guy. Angry. Okay, more. Frustrated. Frustrated. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Animosity? Wow. How old are you? <laughs> animosity. You feel animosity towards people. They're bothering you. Your family. They're bothering you. So what do you feel that feeling? It's called hatred. You feel hatred. More, please. Sick to your stomach. You feel sick. Huh? exhausted absolutely like zzz, at, the end, at the end of the day you're exhausted next day you wake up zzz, zzz, electrocuted the whole day then at the end of the day you're exhausted absolutely accurate love it yes hopeless and helpless 
the one next to you, someone else, okay? Young sister there, okay, please. Guilty, oh my God. Oh my God, about guilty. We have cultures in the Middle East that are established on guilt. Like for you to feel good, you have to feel guilty first. Then you can feel good. Like to them, Islam means I feel guilty. Okay, are you done? No, 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 I feel guilty. Okay, are you done? No, 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 I feel guilty. The, the whole Islam to you is nothing but guilt. And you know, it's, it's a shaitanic trick. Because he makes you do the sin, then you feel guilty. Then you think by you feeling guilty, خلاص, Allah will forgive you. Just feeling guilty will wipe out your sin. Now you can go and sin again. Wallahi al-Azim. Entire cultures in the Middle East established onto making you feel bad, ashamed, and guilty. Wonderful. That's a big word. Guilty. Yes. Oh my God. Empty. Yes. Yes. Because when you are in the middle of the storm, now imagine every one of this is a tornado. One day in Dallas, 25 touchdowns in one day. Wallahi al -Azim, it's like a day of judgment. 25 touchdowns around the same time, within three hours in one day in the afternoon. Yani each and every one of this is a touchdown tornado. And you are standing right in the middle of it. And you are wondering, why in the world my life is so hard and difficult? Why am I not able to figure it out? Why am I so stressed? Nobody wrote stressed. And depressed. More. Give me. Yes. Nervous and anxious. Always on your edge. Always, And it's like you are ticking bomb. Someone says, you, 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 you just explode. Someone says, why, why did you say that to me? What did I say? I said, sabah al khair. That's all what I said. I said, good morning. But you said it in a bad tone. You didn't mean to say sabah al khair. You hate me. I know that. So don't say sabah al khair. Okay, fine. Salamu alaikum works. Wonderful. That's exactly how people are. Like, subhanallah, one of the things when you go to the Middle East in general, within our Muslim country, where smiling is a sunnah, the first thing that strikes you, nobody smiles. Everybody's frown. Everybody's about to get on, like, beat you up. Like, do, like you, you should really, you shouldn't even say salamu alaikum because, then, like, do I know you? <laughs> Wallahi al that happened to me. Salamu alaikum. Do I know you? And I will say wa alaikum as salam to myself. Yes. Confused. Absolutely. One of the most used words by our youth in America is I am confused. And yes, you are confused. Bored. Yes. Oh my God. Boring. This is boring. 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 And, and, and you know what? Because of all of these like SpongeBob, they move very fast that y y the only thing to keep your attention is literally every one to three seconds maximum frame they were discussing that on the on, on the radio maximum frame last three seconds one two three boom change most of the frames in all of these cartoons and all of these movies half a second to one second half a second to one second you come to the masjid i'm talking to you nicely slowly you're like you're, the frame is not moving fast enough, Sheikh. Can you like? Can you just? Can you get to it like quickly? I'm trying. Just please give me a chance. Give me another word. Huh? Lost. Allahu Akbar. Yes, lost. Yes, and that word is used in the Quran. And you know what we do? We say, "Ghayri al maghdubi alayhim wal did you ever pay attention why there is long mad in Adalin? You're literally saying, Ya Allah, don't make me among those whom you are pleased with them. Don't make me among those whom you cursed or earned your anger. Nor make me among those who are lost. That's what Adalin is. And and, 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 and I'm not talking about anything else. I'm talking about myself, like our self here. We don't want to accuse anyone else. Yes. Lonely. 
يا اخي ذا كيدز هير ار تو ديب فور مي انا فور مي سمون ان اماسيتي لونلي وات دو يو نو ابوت لونلي مان جيت ام ميريد فور جاد سيك يو نو هاو اولد ار يو 10 سبحان الله يس سكيرد يس اتس سكيري اتس ذس از سكيري ذس از سكيري يو نو يو نو بيبل ار سكيري ايل تيل يو ذات والله العظيم فورجيت اول ذا هورر موفيز نو هالوين ناثينج people without wearing masks are scary but you cannot tell when you when you when you see them scary world out there and allah tells us that Lord, let not al hayat al dunya eat you up right more huh insignificant absolutely you're like who am i how do i count right okay i'm scared another kid okay go ahead please unsatisfied the young kid there discouraged yes very the young girl anxiety yes we wrote that huh revoked did you just learn that in class or something you're practicing english on me or something revoked like what did they uh-huh did you understand that I I really don't uh, im- immense yet. Okay. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Drained. Exhausted what the sister said. Yes. So we wrote angry and violent. Athamayamshi mukibban ala wajhihi ahda amma yamshi sawiyan ala siratin mustaqim. Yes. irritated yes you become very easily ticking ticking bomb like yes imprisoned present being imprisoned yes insecure well, lonely isolated yes 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 bismillah doubting right yes victimized yes yes worthless wow 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 paranoid it's in the rest of the world and you are the one who pray and can come and let out your heart to Allah imagine the one who doesn't pray imagine the one who doesn't even know that God exists and doesn't believe that and doesn't prescribe to that where are they where they are going to go that's why you and I are literally allah sent us as answers to the world the world needs this now you see all of this and more and more and more and more and i'm sure if i let you like it will become a venting session which i did not plan on having a venting session but so far we vented not bad like the i want to ask you a question i want you to look at all of these negative words and in a moment of clarity and hidayah from allah i want you to think of this don't answer right away hold yourself for 30 seconds a minute and think are these all of this are these see you were not patient you didn't take 30 seconds right <laughs> patience is a virtue are these the root cause or they are the manifestation because some of you and all of us make this mistake do you know what's the mistake if i were to ask you what's the root cause yes mm. most of the people think that this is the root cause for that it is people who are bothering me if you take people away i will not be bothered it is it is my income that is the problem if you t- secure my income i will feel fine and do you know what what do we go we we get stuck in there we make dua do allah to fix this but you know that this is not the root cause never ever 
your misery is caused by people or by family or by it is a lie it does not exist it's one of the tricks of shaitan that's why shaitan here like I have a whole presentation about shaitan because if you don't know shaitan Allah spent so many ayat in the Quran talking about shaitan and his steps oh, you fall for it and then what is solution number one to marriage problems divorce is that a solution no but what does shaitan tell you the spouse is the problem divorce him what is the what is the the reason why people earn haram money because shaitan told them if you work haram you will make enough money that will secure you and give a million example i have to end but if i leave you with you thinking deeply what is the root cause name hmm? okay okay talk I want you to explain what do you mean by yourself? So your mind is telling you your family is the reason, the job is the reason from the Quran because that is the truth, 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 simply put, the truth, the truth, no lies. But still, that's a good answer. But still, there is something. The answer is not good or bad. The answer is something that you have to dig deep in yourself after looking at this. Souls. Imbalance. Okay, I'll take that. Because let me tell you something, brother, right? Do we doubt the Iman of the Anbiya and Mursaleen? Never. صح? Straightforward. Basics of Islam, A, B, C, D. I have just started my entire presentation with one of Anbiya Allah, Sayyidina. But guess what? Still this stuff happened to him. His finances went down. His health went down. His family went down. His image in front of people went down. So that's going to happen to you whether you are a prophet, a messenger, a righteous person, or in the street, nobody. This is going to happen to you. So the question is, why when this stuff happens to you, it affects you? Do you think when Sayyidina Ayyub went through that struggle, he didn't cry? He didn't feel like, like a human? When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his son Ibrahim died, did Rasulullah go and walk around laughing? He cried his eyeballs out, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Inna al-ayna la tadma' My eyes are full of tears. Wa inna al-qalba la yahzan My heart is full of sadness. Wa inna li furaqika ya Ibrahimu la mahzunun Pleases my Lord. There is this misunderstanding about faith and how faith works. That faith is this some magical thing that if you believe in it, you're not going to even feel sad. You're not going to even cry. You're not going to even feel down. Allah tells Rasulullah believing in you and in Allah, don't kill yourself in sadness. And we say Rasulullah never felt sadness. Allah says in the Quran, don't kill yourself in sadness. And we say Rasulullah never felt sadness. This is, might be challenging to you, but if you're not challenged, you will never crack the code. Rasulullah when he passed by his mother's grave, they say we've never seen him cry like that before or after. Rasulullah was and saying, oh, I know, I know they're, they're kuffar. I'm Rasulullah, I'm the last prophet and messenger. I'm okay, Allah is with me. Did you ever read the dua that he made after he left Ta'if? Wallahi, no believer will read that dua and his heart can stay in its place. 
If you read that dua and you don't cry, you need to go back and keep on reading it until you cry. Because it is heartbreaking to hear Rasulullah cry to Allah like that. You know what's your problem? You want a life without sadness. You want a life without stress. You want a life with a life without a stress is not a life. Do you know what happens when people have no more stress? They can't go to sleep. That's why Michael Jackson used to have medicine to go to sleep. Do you know why? Let me tell you a little secret. He has zero stress in his life. And some people said because her boyfriend used to abuse her. I don't know what's the story. You know why these actors, they find them one after another dead overdosed on antidepressants medicines? Because they got it all. Because life without stress is not a life. You feel empty. You feel useless. Meaningless. Who can dig deep and tell me, mm, no. Tested is just Tested is the result of something. Yes. That's that's you're talking about the solution right now. I'm asking why do we feel like that? Yes. Disconnect from Allah? I'm saying Rasulullah who's most connected to Allah when his son died he cried and he said my eyes are full of tears my heart is full of sadness I'm very sad for farewelling you but I will only say my what pleases my Lord. Ah, some people started thinking. Hmm? Hmm? Huh? You guys, you see how your mind thinking? I keep on repeating for you. Rasulullah felt sad and you're saying, if I have strong iman, I wouldn't feel sad. Like, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you could have the strongest iman. Khalas. Ana sayyidu waladi Adam wala fakhr. End of the story. I'm the master of the children of Adam. But he felt sad and he cried and he felt down and he felt stressed. Why? So one sister said it, one brother starting to say it. I want you to think. I want you to think. Because you guys have this weird idea about dunya, and then weird idea about iman, and then weird idea... Really? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes. Mm hmm. What did you say? You said something. Yes. Explain. Okay. Yeah. It's not about control. What does it mean to be a human? You feel? Like what do you want? You want someone to bring you a news that your parent, one of your parents passed away and then you throw a party? Like what do you want? What is Iman to you? Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the thing is, yes, The intrinsic nature. Hello, people. What does it mean to be a human? Yes. <laughs> we're not the devil, but we're not angels. Yes. 
Huh? But we're not supposed to use our mind. I can't love my mother with my mind. My mind will explode if I try to love my mother. I should only love my mother with my heart. Like emotions are good. And that's why when people say, he's emotional, I say, really? Can I know him? Can you introduce me to him? Because there is hardly any emotional people. People, you tell them an ayah and a hadith, they don't cry. Please show me who's emotional. I want to love him. I, I love him. Bring me someone emotional. They say, oh, women are emotional. Okay. That's a strength. That's a blessing. If your mother was not emotional, how would she have carried you nine months? If your mother was not emotional, how would she took care of you the first two years when you're completely, only communication is crying? If you're happy, you cry. And if you're hungry, you cry. And if you're sad, you cry. And if you did it on yourself, you cry. How would she... That's why Allah did not give that to the man. Because you give a child to him, he'll kill him. <laughs> kill him, finish him. You know in France, a guy lives on the 12th floor. His son kept on crying, crying, crying. He took the son, threw him from the window. Subhanallah, he landed on a tree, not a single thing. And the guy went to jail for the rest of his life. But that's man for you. We don't, we're not emotional. You think emotional is bad? And that was never viewed as weakness. But the way we understand life is upside down. Upside down. Emotional is bad. No, there is emotional meaning crazy. That is bad. But emotional, you're in touch with your feelings. Who said that that's bad? Who said that you should not be emotional? If you're not emotional, if you don't feel sadness, if you don't cry, what kind of a human are you if you can't cry? If you don't feel down? Who are you? You think you're made of steel? You think you're made of what? Of wood? What? Not only a mixture of water and dirt. But there is a nafs and there is feelings, there is a heart and there is feelings, there is a mind that thinks and there is a soul that feels that, that is in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the cause of all of this? No, 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 no. It's simply being a human. Do you know what it means to be human? It means to be born and then you will die. Do you know what it means to be human? It means to be imperfect. Do you know what it means to be human? It means to be incomplete. Do you know what it means to be human? It means to be weak. And that's why Allah keeps on telling you, you are a human. You need me. You cannot make it on your own. Sometime between 15 and 35, maybe 45, you think you are on the top of the world. But once it tips over, you realize your health will not help you. You are a human. You, if you don't eat, you die. If you don't drink, you die. If you don't sleep, you die. If you don't go to the bathroom, you die. What are you? And that's why, brothers and sisters, when you learn life and self and faith from the Quran, it's different than what you know. You think you know Islam. You know what Allah he said in the Hadith Al-Qudsi? Oh my servants, all of you are naked except the ones that I've clothed. So ask me for clothes and I will clothe you. My servants, you're all hungry except the one that I feed. So ask me for feed and I will feed you. My servants, all of you are thirsty and I got water. Ask me and I will give you. My servants, what do I do with you? I create, you worship someone else. I give, you thank someone else. My goodness comes down to you, your evil comes up to me. What do you want? My servants, if all of you get together, from the first one to the last one, from the human to the jinn, and they come to you and they want to hurt you with something, they will not be able to hurt you except something I have designated for you. And if they were all to get together to benefit you, they cannot benefit you. You need me. You need me. You need me. What does it mean to be a human? What do you want? You want to go through life. Family has demands. Health has demands. Job has demands. Future has demands. Finances has demands. You want all of these demands and you don't want to feel stressed? 
Who are you not to feel stressed? But you know, luckily, what do you have? Finances stresses you out. Finances hit. You are a human. You are not self-sustaining. Who's, who's the self-sustaining? Who's Al-Ghaniyul Hamid? What does Solomon mean? Self-standing. Self-sustaining. Doesn't need anyone else. Are you self-sustaining? If you don't eat, if you don't drink water for three days, you're dead. If you don't eat for God knows how many days, you're dead. If you don't sleep, you're dead. If you don't rest, you're dead. If you're overworked, you're dead. If you're dehydrated, you're dead. What are you? Once you understand yourself that you are weak, what happens? Allah opens your heart. You accept your weakness. You accept your vulnerability. You accept that you are a human and you are not God. And that's what the sister said, the ego. I can do it myself. I don't need you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've created the jinn and the ins only to worship me and to serve me. And then Allah says, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before your mind start wandering around and saying, why does Allah want me to worship him? Does he need me? No. Then why do I have to worship him? Khalas, I don't have to. No, no, hold on. You need him. <laughs> he doesn't need you. So what's the next ayah after this ayah in Surah Al-Dhariyat? مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَيُّ طِعْمُونَ I don't want them to feed me. Don't get the wrong idea that I want you to worship me so that you help me and sustain me. In Allah, who are Razaqud al Kuwatil Mateen. It is Allah who gives the Rizq. It is Allah who's firm. And it is you who, when you worship me, I give you and I compliment you. You're weak. Every name of Allah has an opposite in you. Al Qawi, you are a Daif. Al Ghani, you are Al Fakir. He's there to compliment you. You are shaky, al-mateen, strong, firm. You need rizq, you are hungry, al-razzaq. You need just God, just open for you, for me a door. Al-fattah, the opener, he opens for you. Ya Allah, I don't know, I'm, I'm ignorant. Al-alim. Ya Allah, I need you to hear my dua, I'm in trouble. Al-sami'. Ya Allah, please, I'm alone here, I'm getting attacked. Al-basir. Every weakness in you, Allah shows you a name that complements it. So you always turn to Allah. And you keep on being bothered that you are a human. And he keeps on telling you, I created you a human, you are not self-sufficient. You will be zero problems when I say so in Jannah. But now, no. So you know what you do? You embrace being a human and you go through life. When it's time to cry, cry and enjoy it. And be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who cried when it was time to cry. Cry! But Rasulullah told you, don't cry, don't go overboard. What people criticize in being emotional is to go overboard. That's why in the science of psychology, they tell you, you have up to two weeks for your depression to be just like a normal depression. Show me a human that doesn't get depressed. Show me a human that doesn't get depressed. But what does they say? If it tips over 14 days, now it's cron, manic depression. Stop, stop, don't go over. Rasulullah gives us formulas. He says you have three days. Two people are angry at each other. Two Muslims angry at each other. This one turns his face away. This one turns his face away. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said they have up to three days to get over their emotions. He didn't say three hours. He said three days. You have up to three days. Work it out. After that, لا يحلو. It is not halal for two Muslims to completely deny each other, disown each other, disconnect from each other over three days. Bas. So you know what Rasulullah did? When it was time for crying, he cried. And he cried to Allah, Ya Allah, you are Al-Hayyul Qayyum. Give us life. Give this sick person a life. Shafaak Allah wa'afaak. You get sick, Allah is a shafi Every weakness in you, Allah has a name for it. To compliment you and to tell you, I'm here for you. 
what is bad is to be overstressed, overworked out. What does that mean? That means you're not in the driver's seat. You are where? You are grinding under the wheels. That means you don't understand life. You don't know how to put limits. When Rasulullah's family asked for his help, he ran to their help. When it tips over limit, no, 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 no. The right of Allah is above. O oh, you who believe, let not your business, money, and your children keep you busy away from the remembrance of Allah. Allah didn't say don't pay attention to your business and children. He just said don't let them keep you. Don't overdo it. He didn't say don't do it. He told you to get married and have children. He told you to open a business and make income. But don't overdo it. So you know what you do? Do you know if you want to enjoy life, what do you do? You enjoy being a human. When it's time to be stressed, enjoy it. Get stressed. And know that this is what it means to be human. When it's time to cry, cry. Just don't overdo it. And every time you fall into one of these emotions, remember there is a name for Allah to compliment it. Understand yourself. Understand this is the inevitable. And understand the wheels of life. And then, if you keep on going back to the Quran, it will put you in the driver's seat. As the Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your sheep. So don't be grinding under the wheels of life. It's not worth it. Health will come and go like Sayyidina da uh, Ayyub alayhi salam. Finance will come and go Ayyub alayhi salam. And, and people never finish the story. When they talk about the story of Ayyub, it's like the worst story ever. Do you know it's the happy, happiest story ever? Do you know when he, when Allah when Allah was done testing him, Allah gave him his wealth, his children, and his health double. People never finish the story. <laughs> they just say, Ayyub, he went through hardship. Yeah, but when he had sabr, he got it back. If I had enough time to explain myself, but if, if I show you the ayat of the Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jal tells you, pray for me in hope and in fear. When Allah praises the believers, يَدْعُونَهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Allah praises you when you have hope and fear and you use your hope and fear to pray to Him. Allah praises you. He doesn't criticize you. He said, why are you scared? Why are you so greedy? He said, no, no, no. Be greedy and be scared. Just pray to me and I will compliment your fears. I will finish it for you. Subhanallah, the understanding of the Quran is different than what we want. What we want is Jannah now. And we are constantly disappointed that it's not Jannah now. It's not Jannah now. It's Jannah when it comes. Now, enjoy being a human. Don't go overboard. Remember Allah in every weakness you have. This is what it means to be a human and understand yourself and keep the book of Allah as your guide. If you understand that, we are all confused. And you know who's Al-Hadi? Allah. We all have anxiety. Do you know who's Al-Mu'min? Allah. What does Al-Mu'min mean? The secure. The one who secures your fears. We all have fears. No problem. You have fears? Ahlan wa sahlan. Allah is Al-Mu'min. I'm in the dark. Allah is An-Nur. Allahu Nuru Samawati Wal Ard. I need help. Allah is An-Nafi'. I need some. Allah is Al-Mu'ati. Whatever your problem is, there is a name for Allah to complement it. Don't say, I don't want to be poor. <laughs> Allah says, You're poor and I'm rich. So ask me, I will give you. You don't say, I am rich. You say, I am poor. And you celebrate it. Like Rasulullah celebrated being a poor person. Allahumma ahini miskinan, wa amitni miskinan, wa ahshurni fi zumratil masakin. Bas, yalla, go, enjoy it. Enjoy being a miskin. And you're saying, please Allah, don't make me a miskin. Rasulullah says, no, no, Allah, make me miskin. But make me miskin only to you, not to people. I would love it to be miskin to you. Jazakum Allah khair, barakallahu feekum. If you have any questions, ask. If you don't, go home. It's been a long night. And this took longer than that. Inshallah, if I said anything right, it's from Allah. If I said anything wrong, it's from shaitan and from my nafs. But if you have any questions, if you want ayat from the Quran and you have time,
we will keep on giving you ayat, ayat, ayat until you are satisfied. It's your right upon me to ask me for where is the ayah and hadith. And my right is to answer you. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh al for the very powerful talk. We do have some time for Q&A, so if you guys want to stick around for that, you can. If you want to leave, that's fine as well. Uh, so go ahead and raise your hand and we'll give you the mic for the questions. We'll take one from the brother's side and one from the sister's side and then we'll go from there. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. This is just a quick comment. As you were mentioning about in the Middle East and this and that, you know, we have a saying in the Middle East that's Ya Sabrak Ya Ayyub, which basically means Allah grant me the patience that Ayyub had. So eventually they all know there's a happy ending to the story. That's why they all want that patience. And Do you know when something happens that you don't like, sometimes you cannot change it right away? Do you know what Allah says? Sabr. I will change it, but it will take time. No, Ya Allah, I want it now. No, it's not going to be now. You have to be patient. Did Allah say, don't complain? No, He said, complain, but to me. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ Why do we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ If we are perfect and without no problem, why would you say, إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ That means I don't need Allah's help. Yes. Any question? She can ask, yes. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam. Um, you mentioned an application, a Quran app, that we can search any word. Mm -hmm. Al Quran is one of them. Al Quran. Alif A L Q U R A N. It has a greenish. It has so many translations. 11 translations in English. It has so many ways of searching. In Arabic or in English, it will pull all the ayat. And that is one in an ocean of Quranic apps today that exist that has left no excuse for us to say, I don't know the Quran. You don't need to be a hafiz. Your iPhone is already a hafiz. And you can tell them, give me all the ayat about ar ruh and it will give you all the ayat about ar ruh And that's not to take anything from those who are hafiz of Quran. May Allah bless them. Yes. Okay, the next question we're going to take is from the anonymous uh, question box. Uh, so the question is, I have a brother who doesn't pray and is jobless. Mm -hmm. My mom wants to know what, how she can help him become a better Muslim. Tell him you don't have a job. Allah is al-Razzaq, al-Fattah, al-Mu'ti, al-Nafi', al-Wahhab. All of these names to get you a job. So pray to Allah Azza wa Jal. If he understands that his interest is in Allah, that will get him up to pray for his dunya, a job, and for his akhirah to get a jannah. So if he, this, her brother understands that Allah is there for you, not there against you, if you are a believer, Allah is there for you. Allah is waiting for you to make dua. <laughs> yani imagine Rasulullah sallallahu says, Allah makes himself present in the last one third of the night. And Allah asks, is there anyone who has a need that I will answer his need? Is there anyone who has a dua that I answer his dua? Is there anybody who has any problem that he wants me, I will solve it for him? And what are you doing? You're sleeping. And the next day you woke up grumpy, ajeeb. When Allah was asking you for to ask a question, you were sleeping. And when you woke up grumpy, and now you're mad at Allah. What are you doing? You just want it perfect. And you're mad at Allah that it's not perfect. And by the way, He promised you perfection in Jannah. Just get, move on, move, keep moving. Just keep going. And you will make it there, inshallah, to be Abdullah. Inshallah. Yes. Another question? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. As we know, and it is always said, that nothing happens until he wills. Now, if I do something bad, 
is it by his will and if we say by his will then how does it work right. and the other important thing and it contradicts that nothing happens without his will even if i kill someone is it by he, by his will how do you respond to that this is number question one question and i have second question if you have time say for instance some young girl or boy has some disability or some disease and he complains or she complains why allah or the authority what was my fault why why he uh, gave me such such suffering before i st- even started my life i i would what you I, please what I, what I, highlight I, yeah what i tell these the people who ask that i say we are all disabled we all have disability it's not only one who has disability but you know what is funny we only recognize disability as a disability when it's physical but 99% of the people are mentally disabled emotionally disabled spiritually disabled and nobody opens a word so long as they look beautiful and good the eyes are big and the angle of the picture is nice خلاص it's pro- it's no problem but you put two people one is physically disabled and what is and one physically not disabled but if you were to sit down with both of them the one who's not physically disabled is 10 times more disabled than the one who's physically disabled but we don't recognize that that's the problem ana for me when i see those people who are physically disabled i go and learn from them i have just finished taking a class in the university from a lady who has phd from uc berkeley completely on a wheelchair cannot live except cannot exist except on that chair is a very sophisticated chair like very electronics and this her entire life is in that chair and she was my teacher and i've learned from her more than i've learned from any other teacher in the university i can i always take classes in i never stop learning i never learn for a certificate that's what ignorant people do they learn for a certificate they hang it on the wall and then they go and get a job and tell people it's because of the certificate you get a job because allah is a razaq and that certificate is a certificate of your ignorance not your knowledge because if you went and learned knowledge for for the sake of allah you would never stop taking classes you would never stop learning a muslim never stop learning that has to be clear so that's one issue the other issue is what you're asking is about al qada and al qadar and al qada and al qadar it's unfair because i cannot answer it in 5 minutes but in a quick answer allah gave us will and allah will judge us for the will that we have with our will we can choose something right and do something good with our will we can choose something bad or evil and do something bad or evil allah will not force us to do something good nor allah will force us to do something bad but when you do good and you do bad you where are you living on this land planet whose planet is this allah's planet whose sky is this allah's sky whatever you do it's happening on his land on his property subhanahu wa ta'ala when you rent a house you are in the rental apartment whatever you do inside your house is not the problem of the landlord but whatever you do in that house is the property of the landlord so allah gave us in this bubble of time and space a well we can do right we can do wrong that's why there is a day of judgment if if when we do wrong allah made us to do wrong then there will be no day of judgment because allah is al adil the one who's fair and just if allah would make you do something wrong then he will judge you for it then he will take you to hell then you're talking about a different god that i'm talking about that's a completely different ilah and allah said la ilaha illallah 
And Allah is Al-Adil. And Allah would not make someone do something wrong, judge him and take him to hell because he made him do it. If a judge today in America makes that, we call him every name in the book. Unfair, unjust, corrupt, this and that. You want to describe that to Allah? Na'udhu billah, hasha lillah. That is out of the dictionary of Islam. And the people who get involved in such discussions, they want, and that is the lowest, like that is na'udhu billah, that's negative faith. They want to do what is wrong, and then they want to blame Allah for it. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. May Allah never make us like that. This is beyond negativity. Like this is, this is kufr wal billah. This is kufr, is to do something wrong. You know, when the, in the Quran, Allah says that the kuffar Quraysh said, Who's the half of If Allah willed, we would have not been mushrikeen, nor our fathers been mushrikeen. We are mushrikeen because Allah wants us to be mushrikeen. Allah said, I send you a prophet, I send you a book, I guide you to the guidance, and then you say, it's my will that you make shirk? A'udhu billah. Ta'ala Allahu amma yaquluna uluwan kabira. That's the end of the discussion. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Okay, we have uh, time for one or two more questions, so we'll take one from the sister's side. Yes, there's a sister there has a question, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. I wanted to ask when I go on a safar somewhere and in one airport it's Asar and then I make it to another city and it's Asar also, do I pray Asar again or do I just continue prayers? Or like if I'm on the airplane and the travel is 10 hours in the air and it's time for uh, Fajr and it's morning on one side and night on the other, how do I pray? You pray the time of the salah that you are in in the plane. So, uh, if, if you are in the plane and it is time for fajr, then you pray fajr. Okay. If you travel six hours and it's still fajr, you only pray fajr. And when you land, you pray what is the salah that is due in that time of prayers. You don't go and time yourself based on Australia, when you left Australia. No, when you are in Australia, before you get in the plane, try to pray the prayers. You are in the plane, it became Dhuhr, you pray Dhuhr. You are in the plane, it became Asr, you pray Asr. You are in the plane, and it stayed before Maghrib, the sun is not setting. You wait until the sun sets, then you pray Maghrib. You don't go and calculate based on this time and that time and this time. Allah judges you, where am I now? Which time of salah right now? Can I pray Maghrib and the sun didn't set? What am I praying? I can't. I pray what is the time of salah that is in my time. Did that answer your question? So if it's Asr when I leave the airport in one country and it becomes Asr again when I leave No, America. when you leave, when you leave, you either pray Asr before you get into the airport altogether. If you couldn't, you pray Asr in the plane. Because that time when you are in the plane, it is Asr. So you pray Asr. And then the plane takes off. Now you are waiting for which Salah? The next one. The next one, Maghrib. So I don't repeat the prayers. Why would you repeat the prayers? Because when I come from Sweden, it's Asr. And then when I come to America, we go back in time. Yes. So it's Asr again. Yes. So now where are you? You are in America. Yes. If it is the same prayer... You don't pray Asr twice in one day. Okay. We have a clear hadith about that. Okay. If it's the same day, it's, if it's two different days, then you pray two different Asr. Right. We don't repeat the same Fard twice in the same day. Yes. Absolutely. Jazakumullah khair. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, it's going to be in an I think. <laughs> I think I'm a human. And I enjoy my weakness. And I am tired. And I'm very happy that I'm tired. About because it reminds me of Allah. You know when you feel tired, you realize what it means to be a summit. You understand Allah. You say, Subhana, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. La ta'khuduhu. But ta'khuduni sinatun wa nawm. Me, I feel sleepy and I feel tired. 
And I enjoy that. I am a human. Alhamdulillah that I am a human. And I have no problem with that feeling tired, feeling sad, feeling... But so long, don't overdo it. Remember that? Enjoy being a human. Just don't overdo it. And you will, life will be fine. You will enjoy the happy times and the sad times. Sheikh, yes. Last one, because sent it like twice. So. Okay. okay. Yalla. So the last one. Um, this person says, I have had cutting problems before mm. for one whole year. Mm. But alhamdulillah, I was able to stop and have gotten closer to Allah and have been clean for about one year and nine months. I've asked Allah to forgive me every time I pray, but for some reason, I can't seem to forgive myself. How do you forgive yourself? Wallahi, first of all, you on the day of judgment, you're not going to judge yourself. So I really care less if you forgive yourself or you don't forgive yourself. Like, what the heck? Like, what does it mean you don't forgive yourself? What does it mean? Are you the one who's the judge on Yom Al-Qiyamah? Okay, so you don't forgive yourself. Okay, and? We get lost in, in things. I appreciate the question of the sister and I appreciate her faith. Because she has a good deen and iman and she's saying, she's saying, how could I have done that? You are a human. Shaitan took the best of you. Your weakness took the best of you. Then you discovered, I am a human and I need Allah. So what did you do? You turn to Allah and you pray to Allah. And once you do that, Allah is al-Ghafoor al-Rahim. Now, we move on. And we don't get stuck because you know how shaitan, one of the traps of shaitan is like landmine. One of the traps is he makes you make it the problem. He makes you do the disobedience. Once you do it, he gets you lost in guilt. Allah will never forgive you. Allah will never forgive you. You are so bad, Allah will never... Ajeeb. Are you the spokesman of Allah? Or Allah is his own spokesman? If Allah says in the Quran, I forgive you, what's your problem? But shaitan keeps on hunting you. He first hunts you to do it. Then he first... And then he hunts you so that you don't repent. And when you repent, he gives you doubt. Allah did not forgive you. You know what you do? Go and open the window in your room. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem and kick him so hard let him land in Antarctica until don't ever come back to me because Allah forgive me. Who are you to say that Allah doesn't forgive me? I am moving on with my life. I'm moving on with my salah. I'm moving on with my school. I'm moving on with my Islam. I'm moving on with my... With my Khalas, that's the past. The past is done. I am moving forward. But who's this to speak in the name of Allah? So I'm telling you, forget it. Drop it. And enjoy being a Muslim Alhamdulillah, afallahu amma salaf. Allah forgive the, the past because, because the proof for one year, nine months, you've stopped. That is tawbah nasuha. That means, mashaAllah, you're a good person. Celebrate that. Celebrate your, and show shaitan, put your both fingers in the eyes of shaitan. Say, ah, nine, one year, nine months, I didn't listen to you. And he's now crying. No, no, but Allah will not forgive you. Don't listen to him. He's playing tricks on you. No, no, you say, no, no, no. Put your fingers again in his eyes. Say, no, no, Allah forgive me. And then he comes and says, how do you know? You know what's your answer? Because he said so. And when Allah says something, he does not change his mind, nor he speaks lies. Allahu huwa al-haq, wa qawluhu al-haq, wa wa'aduhu al-haq. He promises the truth, he speaks the truth, and he's the truth. How do I know Allah forgive me? I'll tell you how I know. He said it. And when Allah says something, he's not like you, shaitan. He doesn't change his word. So, get lost. That's how you talk to shaitan, when he comes and talks to you like that. May Allah bless you and bless your deen and iman. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, everybody, if I could just have your attention for one minute. I just need to make a couple of announcements. One minute and we'll be done. Um, first of all, if you really enjoyed this event, uh, this event was brought to you by the programs committee here at ISOC. They have been requesting to get more and more people involved so they can help put on more events like this. So if you're interested in being involved, go out to the table and have a sign-up sheet. So go ahead and sign up up there to get more involved. Uh, also, if you would like to uh, buy some food, there's food available to be purchased. We're all out. Okay. Okay, they got tea and coffee and stuff like that at the coffee cart, so check that out. 
Also, pick up your kids from the conference room uh, if you have them in the children's program. Uh, Sheikh Ali Adini Bekri will be speaking at MSA West. All of the youth are encouraged to attend that. And I also see MIG is putting on a carnival. Uh, so make sure to attend that. That's in February. Uh, last thing, if you signed up for the counseling session, meet at the ISOC table outside. And I'm going to ask Sheikh to end with a dua, if he's okay with that. Never mind. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.